right now we're going to talk about making a MIDI multi effects rack. Okay, so what we're trying to do, and before we get started, why don't we go ahead and lay it out a little bit? I'd like to make it so that I can make a, a multi effects unit where each range or region rather of the keyboard will correspond to a different group of effects. Um, so what I like to do is make it so when I play a note from let's say C1 to C2, a certain effect takes uh, takes effect. <laughs> um, uh, when I play from C2 to C3, a certain uh, effect takes effect and uh, same thing C3 to C4. So what I want to do, to do is be the effects to be divided up by the regions of the keyboard. So that's what we're trying to do right now. So let's go ahead and make a chain for each region that we'd like to do. So let's just say three. Um, once again, you could do it as many as you want. Probably you can do 128 chains if you want, but let's keep it to three for right now. Go ahead in here, uh, right click and press create chain. And that's gonna make one chain. And so we're gonna need three chains. And the way that we can do this really quickly just press Command D, like so. You can do it twice and you can make three. And if you wanted to make 128, like I said before, that'd probably be the best way to do it because right clicking is a little bit, takes a little bit more time. Okay, so now we have three effects chains. And you'll notice that the instrument rack, in this case, it's acoustic piano sound, is, um, <clears throat> is outside the rack. So just a word of, on this, um, remember that in Ableton, the signal chain in a MIDI rack, or in a MIDI track rather, goes from MIDI effect to MIDI instrument to audio effect. So that means that if we're gonna make a MIDI multi-effect, we're gonna have to um, make sure that all the effects go before the instrument. So we're gonna make all MIDI effects, then the instrument, and then audio effects. So that means for the purposes of this demonstration, we're not going to have any uh, instruments in this rack. We're just going to have effects. And because of that, we're not going to have any audio effects as well. But um, this is not necessary. You can mix effects and, um, and instruments in the same rack. I'm just doing it right now just to keep it a little bit on the clean side. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename these chains for what we want them to do. So let's say um, Command R <coughs> is going to be renamed, and then I'm going to call this one Dry. This one, Command R, call this one ARP. Command R over here and make this one whole tone. Okay, and now that we have this all separated out, let's go ahead and drag those corresponding effects into those chains. So now that we have these three different um, uh, tracks here, what we're gonna do is we are going to go into this chain editing mode right here. And so if you don't see these green uh, bars right here, you want to make sure that chain key rather is selected. So it's not velocity, it's not chain, it's certainly not hide. So we need to use keyed, okay? So what we said before is we want all of the notes from C1 to C2 to go into dry. So we'll go ahead and select this chain right here. Like so. And I'm going to drag it down here. So basically this makes it so that the area, the region of the keyboard that corresponds to this green bar is going to enter this chain. So this is actually what allows you to funnel out different notes and just send different regions to each chain. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to do this like so. And that will allow us, and we'll just make this one all the way up actually. So that means that anything that comes into, let's say an F1 is going to go into dry, and a G, F2 is going to go into ARP, and a A sharp three is going to go into whole tone, okay? So <clears throat> this is pretty useful, and also what you should notice is that the, right at the top here, there's also this little bar, and what this allows us to do is actually taper it. So if we wanted to, there could be, let's say, some overlap between these guys, and then they would taper into one another. So if you played a C sharp two, then it would go to both both chains. We don't want that to be happening right now, so we'll just keep those bars equal. Okay. So now we have this, and let's go ahead and make sure that it works. So, oh, sorry about that. A little bit on the loud side. So, all right, and then I go up an octave.
if I go up another octave. Oh, phew, whoa, that was a little bit much, huh? So, not sure why that, why, why you'd want that. Maybe we should change that a little bit. Let's see here. The scale is something a little bit nicer. Let's call it C minor. How about that? <laughs> there we go. It's a little bit more palatable, right? Okay. So, that's how... That's how we can um, make a MIDI multi-effect rack by spread across the regions of the keyboard. So, that is all well and good, and I'm actually pretty happy with this. But sometimes, you're not going to want... Um, you're going to want to correct for it. So we basically have instituted a pitch difference between these regions because um, <clears throat> we've used these regions of the keyboard to divide between the different effects chains. But now that we're the, let's say the, the um, arpeggiator is always going to be an octave above the dry tone. And this part is always going to be two octaves above this. And that's not always going to work. Maybe you want them to all be the same tone. So what we're going to have to do is we're gonna to have to drop down the pitch after it's passed into this chain, if that makes any sense. So uh, things go an octave up to get into the arpeggiator chain, and then we'll make them an octave down in order to bring them back in line with everything else. So let's go ahead and go to pitch like this. We'll put this pitch right before the arpeggiator. And we'll do negative 12 here to bring it down that octave again. So now, so I'll go an octave up to enter the arpeggiator mode, but you'll notice it's still the same octave. Even though on the keyboard here, you can see it should be an octave up. Since I've pitched it down, I'm not gonna have that octave effect. And we'll do the same thing on this one, except that we'll drop it down two octaves to correct for the fact that we this one is actually two octaves away from the dry signal. Oh, sorry. Two octaves is going to be negative 24. All right, so let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, so now we've made a MIDI effects rack, a MIDI multi effect rack that is going to use the areas of the keyboard not so much for pitch difference, but mostly to um, determine which, which uh, effect chain it goes into. So that is actually going to allow us to have a whole bunch of different MIDI effects on the same keyboard. So this way you, don't, you can actually uh, switch between them pretty fluidly without having to um, ch chain select or, or turn little effects units on or off. If that's another way to do it.